Hello and welcome back. I'm your friendly neighborhood technician and this is another episode of the Gapple Sauce Chronicles. Uh, today we're going to go over a few things I remembered that I didn't go over on the, uh, the engine from before. I took off one of the uh, valve covers on there so we can uh, take a peek at the rocker arms and uh, what else is going on there so I can uh, give you a little bit more info on the head, the rocker arms, uh, stuff like that. And also I have the uh, jack stand or the engine stand that I need to put together. And I, need have, I have the uh, the mount for that for this engine also, and um, also some other things that we're going to go over too. And let's get right to it. Okay, here we are. And like I was mentioning in the previous video, I needed this. It's an adjustable push rod for measuring the uh, for adjusting the uh, uh, the rocker arm geometry, uh, so I can uh, make sure that's opening and closing at the right um, at the right time. You don't want it uh, opening too far this way or closing too far this way. Uh, so that's what that's for. I'm going to have to, hopefully I don't have to take the push rods out. Like I said, I put it together before I realized you have to use that and set that up. So, um, one thing also I'm going to have to figure out is, uh, you can see these, uh, scat, uh, rocker arms right here. I need to figure out, I need to do some research, dig through a bunch of paperwork and see if these are 1.4 or 1.5, uh, rocker arms. So I don't, I'm not sure about that, but you can see in there we have... Um, double valve spring, dual valve springs in there also. So these are pretty pretty beefy valve springs, you can see right there. And these are CB044 heads, you can see right there. So I found that, I remember, I, I forgot on the last video, so I didn't know what those, uh, those heads were. This uh, engine does have a cam in there too, and um, on the last video I didn't show these. 48 IDFs. See right there, right stamped right above made in Spain Weber's. Um, I had already uh, gone through and rebuilt these, so I got new gaskets and everything in there. Um, the uh, new seal or the uh, the new diaphragm in there, new gaskets throughout and stuff like that. Make sure they're uh, running properly. Um, these I, I actually there wasn't any gas in any no old gas I had to clean out or anything, so that's a good uh, good indication. Um, also one thing I'm going to have to figure out how to fix is this wind deflector or the, uh, the deflector down there. I'm going to have to figure out how to get that, um, not touching this, uh, push rod tube because I can just see, um, vibrating, uh, and wearing a hole right in that push rod tube, push rod tube, which, uh, I don't want that kind of leak. So I'm going to have to see if I can figure out a way I can bend that up slightly so it's not touching, but these, uh, deflectors do have to be there also you can see the same thing on this side right there i don't like that so i'm gonna have to fix that also and one thing i'm gonna have to do i got a new pulley this is the one that was on there and you can see it's a little smaller and like i said because it's air cooled i do want the um the, as much air flowing as possible and the correct amount of air flowing as possible which getting the correct size pulley you can see right here stock size pulley so i'm gonna have to put that on and it comes with a new seal right there which is going to be right here i'm gonna have to figure out how to get that seal off as well and what else can i think of oh i do have the oh here's a clutch it is a stage one whatever that means something or other um haven't figured that out yet but i do have the uh the mount for the Jack stand goes right there. It's going to go right there. Pay no attention to that unused workout bench right there. It's being used right now, isn't it? But I got some nuts. I'm going to have to take this off, take the clutch and the flywheel off because I need to put a ridiculous amount of washers on there after that, um, um, the mount for this is on there. Um, and I'm not going to be able to do that when the, when it's that close to the flywheel. So that's where we're at on that. So, like I said before, um, I had thrown the, all these together, torqued these down to the proper uh, torque, and um, you can see right in here, there are no shims between the head and the rocker arm mounts. You can see yeah, down there, nothing. No shim. Nothing. So, I had set the valve lash and everything in here also um, to zero because they are chrome-only push rods and not aluminum push rods, so you want the valve lash set as zero. So um, what we're going to have to do is take these back off. So I'm going to have to reset the valve lash and everything on there. 
um, once I get the proper amount of shims. And uh, I'll see if I can do a, a quick how-to on how to set up the uh, valve geometry, which includes a dial indicator um, and a uh, some kind of base with it. It's going to clamp on somewhere. I'm not sure where it's going to clamp on. I'm about to watch a video on that also. This is completely unrelated, but maybe you guys can help me out. I need help identifying these things. I have no idea what they are. Well, I mean, I have a little bit of an idea what they are, but maybe you guys can help me out. All I know is um, I got these uh, from a friend who got them from his dad who got them from a friend um, who was uh, big into uh, auto racing. So as far as I know, they have, might have something to do with IndyCar. This is, it almost looks like some kind of uh, flange, like a mount for a, um, a wheel or a tire, but there's no thread anywhere on there. And I can't figure out how anything would need a three quarter inch impact right there. The only thing I can think of is maybe, I mean, I don't know, I'm just spitballing here. Maybe this is the fitting that goes into the car to start the engine, but the three quarter inch uh, drive, whatever you're gonna use, high torque starter, shove it in the back of the car, but maybe that was attached to the engine somehow. I don't know. No clue. And also this is some kind of thing. That's as much as I know about it. This is springy. Yeah, springy. I don't know what that is. Fuel pump maybe? I don't know how, but maybe it just flows in an insane amount of fuel. Maybe? I don't know. Maybe one of you guys knows. Let me know if in the uh, in the comments if you know what they are or whatnot. Okay, so here's an issue that I found uh, while mocking up the tins. You can see there's the aftermarket one and there is the factory one. You can see right here, let's start with the aftermarket side. You can see right here how the tin is actually covering the mounting point for the carburetor riser. And you can see how much it covers it right there. It even covers part of the port right here. And it's because you can see right here this uh air diverter right here is actually hitting the head right here so the head physically cannot go any farther that way also it's got a few cracks here which is no big deal i can throw a few spots of weld on that but this one won't even work whereas this one i had mocked up uh, a while ago and i had modified it slightly you can see that it clears the opening um but i had to snip right here and cut that to kind of move that that way and move these outwards to clear that so i'm probably going to end up modifying these a little bit further and just going ahead and using the aftermarket ones all right so i got all those other bits taken care of now i just have the tins kind of mocked up here you can see this is kind of loose nothing's actually bolted down this one's just set back here so i think that's it for this week maybe next week we'll get the uh, uh the tins completely mocked up there completely installed actually um, and then, um, maybe we can, uh, see if we can get the alternator installed and we'll get the oil filler neck installed, which is right here. There's the oil filler neck, which is actually the, uh, the mount for the alternator also. You can see it sits right in there. Yeah, that's going to be right there. And then, um, actually have a, uh, filler cap for that. Actually, it's a, uh. A uh, little aluminum piece I've been saving from the old um, Porsche style fan shroud that was installed. I still got to find some of the other tins. I have all the tins. I have to find the um, the tin that goes around here. I did something with it. I have this tin. It goes right here. I have that tin I got to install. And hopefully we can get all that done next week. Um, but I think that's uh, that's about it. One more thing, uh, we'll also get the fan installed. This is a uh, welded fan, so the fan, the uh, blades in here aren't gonna come apart at high RPM and punch holes in pretty much every piece of the rear of the car. So, also, I did find that little aluminum piece I was talking about. You can see down here, it also has a uh, breather tube. So if there's a uh, breather that goes, uh, aluminum breather that mounts right about here in the back of the car. Also, this is a non-oil cooler Fan shroud, you can see right here, there's an oil cooler block off plate right there. 
So, because like I said, it does have an external oil cooler. So, um, next week we'll get this fan installed and we'll get the uh, alternator in there and we'll get this thing bolted down properly. There's no gasket in there right now. Just kind of have it setting on it. So, see you next week. Thanks for watching.